The Wallabies made a dream start against Miss Firing All Blacks team. When it's marked, let's talk rugby. So the Wallabies are holding onto the ball early on in this one. They managed to force a penalty for offside and they decided they're going to go to the corner rather than for the post. They go to the mall, but it's not making much ground. So then they decide to swing it inside to the backs. Then they go straight back out to the wing again. And Pattaya puts Cornbetti over in the corner. Have a Timo check because he flirts with the touchline, but he just about got the ball down before his knee hit the line, so the try is good. Carter Gordon converts from the touchline is 7 0 to the Wallabies. From there, then, all blacks are struggling to get any kind of sustained possession. They have a chance from a line out inside the Wallabies half, but the throw is crooked. So then Australia win the penalty at the resulting scrum with Williams going to ground. Gordon misses touch from his penalty, but the Wallabies are still coming forward in attack. Now I can need to say he makes a good break and gets them up, you know, around about to 22. We then have good carries from McWright and Valentini gets them even further forward. Then they get the ball out to Hooper. He shrugs off McKenzie's attempt to tackle and goes over even with Stevenson hanging onto him. This try is good, so Gordon converts again from out wide and was 14-0, and it's the perfect start for the Wallabies in those first few minutes. Both teams, after this, then they're looking to run the ball every chance they get, and pretty much from anywhere. We have some good stuff from both you know, sets of players. McKenzie with a lovely bat pass at the back of his hand to try to put uh, Leicester um, Benganuku away down the wing. Then we have a great carry from Bell out of his own 22 from the Wallabies. Jordan then manages to break up the middle for New Zealand, but he can't find any support. And New Zealand do kind of hang on to the ball, slow down a little bit. They get it to McKenzie, and then he's hit high, so it's a penalty to New Zealand. Mackenzie slots this one from in front of the 14-3. But I, I noticed in, in this one as well that there were a few breaks where normally you expect, like especially with the, the, I think the All Blacks and France, the two best teams in the world, that once somebody makes a break, there is always there are always options for them because people are anticipating that break and they're there to support. But there was a good few times for New Zealand today where the support was just you know, that meter or two behind where they needed to be. So when the person carrying was scanning, they can't see them. And then they, they go for contact rather than, you know, potentially drawing and passing to actually score. So this is one here, but they did get the, the penalty at least. From there, then New Zealand, they have a chance. They've got a central scrum. It's just inside the... Australian 22 because Corum Bete had dropped a high ball that you know should have he was wasn't under any pressure and I thought overall especially while McKenzie was on a 10 that Australia kicked a lot better than New Zealand but this one he must have just taken his eye off the ball but what happens then is again New Zealand go to the ground the scrum this time it's La 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 and it's another penalty to Australia they kick it clear we then have some nice offloading from Australia, allows them to work it to within five meters of the line, but then there's just one offload too many. New Zealand are able to turn it over, but they don't clear it that far. We end up with like a, a line out to Australia, maybe 10, 15 meters away from the line. Australia then lose Parecki, who was I thought was pretty decent to injury, and Nonger comes on for him for his second cap. We then restart with a Wallabies line out and eventually they drive over under the post but they get held up but they did have penalty advantage so Gordon pops this one over for, for 17-3. We then have further all back errors like they um, they lose another line out on their own throw then McKenzie he kicks dead from just the side of his own 22 then a bit later on he misses touch again with another penalty. 
Australia, they go looking for more points before the break, but some decent defence from the All Blacks, including Vitalik, who I thought was outstanding at the breakdown. He goes over to win a penalty just before then he's taken off as a precaution. He picked a knock up maybe a few minutes earlier and uh, Vai comes on for him. But yeah, I thought Vitalik was outstanding and Whitelock later as well, the two of them at the breakdown. Then Australia, they're piling on pressure in 22. They force a penalty for not rolling away. They decide to go to the corner. The mall, it's inching forward. And then McDermott, he darts for the line from about, it's about four meters out, I'd say. And Whitelock kind of gets a half tackle on him. He doesn't hold him, but what he does manage to do is force him to turn onto his back. And so he goes over the line on his back and then Sebae gets in there and holds up the ball and doesn't allow him to ground it. I felt that McDermott, you know, should have scored there. He should have gone in maybe a little bit lower and looked to dive over the line rather than uh, the way he did it where he kind of uh, uh, allowed himself to be kind of turned when he was going over the line. But take nothing away from Whitelock and Surveyor, it was fantastic defence from them to, you know, prevent what should have been a, a certain try. From here then, um, Australia, they continue to apply pressure. And New Zealand, though, they, they're making errors, but they, they are, like, keeping them out. They're not letting them score, but they're not really doing much themselves going forward. So halftime is 73. So the Wallabies, into the second half then, New Zealand come out. They look an absolutely, completely different team than the one that played in the first half. They set up a mall in the 22. Then they go inside to Fenga Anuku. He goes close on the post. Then they move it out wide to Stevenson, who stays strong and grounds despite like Kellaway tried to tackle him into touch. But Stevenson was just too strong and was able to just flop down to to score. Mackenzie converts this one from out wide, so 17-10, and it's game on. Mackenzie, you know, he... We all know about his undoubted skill in terms of running a back line. He, I thought, when he started in, he started in the the first, was yeah, it was, he started in the first rugby championship game, right, which was against uh, Argentina, and you know he struggled from the tee, but I, I felt today he obviously had worked on that because he improved a lot. From the tee. He was getting really difficult kicks from out wide, but his kicking from hand was still very poor. But he's made it 70-10 and it really is game on now for New Zealand. Carter Gordon then, who I thought was fairly decent for Australia in the first half. Second half, not so much. He tries though to spark something for the Wallabies. Goes on a mazy run, but then Sabea gets over the ball and wins a penalty for New Zealand. And you just feel that kind of momentum shifting between the two teams. Then Whitelock wins another penalty for New Zealand, but Mackenzie misses touch from this one. And he's then replaced by Moonga at 10. Australia have a period of possession after that, but not really going anywhere. And again, Whitelock gets over the ball and wins a penalty for New Zealand. As I said, he was absolutely outstanding for them today. New Zealand then go up the line with this one. They try to set up the mall, but then Will Skelton just kind of comes through the middle and uh, turns the ball over. It looked like Stan, Sam Kane might have actually knocked the ball on as it was turned over, but it wasn't picked up. And then just after that, then Mac McDermott does not knock on, and this one is picked up, so... It is a scrum to New Zealand in a dangerous position. We could very easily have been a scrum to Australia with them, giving them a chance to clear the danger. But from here then, New Zealand win a free kick at the scrum. Sabea goes quickly from that. And then Fenganuku goes over between the posts. But we have a team, TMO review and we see that he drops the ball just he's trying to ground it under the posts. So this it's no score, but... Um, you know, it's all New Zealand now and Australia aren't really offering anything in attack. 
you know, at all. They're not really getting any go forward and, and very hard to get out of their own half as well. New Zealand then, they have a penalty straight in front and Moonga makes it 17-13 and they're, they really are beginning to close in now. Wallabies, they finally muster something from the restart. They hold on to the ball, you know, and they did really well because there was a real intense pressure from New Zealand at the breakdown. There was a few times where it looked like they might actually turn the ball over, but Australia hang on to it. They win a penalty for entry about 30 minutes out. Gordon then hits the post with, I thought it was a kind of a test level, a fairly you know, simple kick. Like there wasn't that much of an angle, and as I said, it's only thirty meters out. But you know, uh, Test rugby makes that gap smaller and smaller. I guess so. He is supposed New Zealand then make their way back up the field. The forwards, you know, they're right on the line. They're pounding away, and then uh, now goes over under the post. This time he does. He does manage to ground. Unlike Fuinganuku earlier, it's converted by. Uh, by Moonga and it's 2017 New Zealand have hit the front for the very first time in the game then White and Cooper come on at half back for Australia as McDermott and Gordon are taken off New Zealand they now start winning scrum penalties as well and it feels like they turned almost everything around but maybe as a reminder of their struggles they, they from that penalty they kick up the line and then Australia managed to nick the, the line out just to show them, you know, not everything is going your way still. Then we have um, Stevenson, nice little run from him. He offloads to Jordan to put him through a gap. And again, he's got support on both sides, but a little bit back. I think um, Smith was, was certainly on his inside. So he takes contact. Smith then takes it and darts off. And then he gets isolated at the next rook. And, you know, it was one of those, as I said before, where the support just seems to be that, just that little bit behind where they need to be. And once New Zealand get that right, you know, they're making enough line breaks now that, that somebody is going to suffer from that, that they're just going to pile on points. Um, but for the Wallabies today, at least, um, it wasn't to be. But from here then, Australia managed, yeah, they win the penalty. And um, then they work it upfield. They win another penalty just inside the New Zealand half. And then they point to the post, but the T has gone missing. It takes a little while for them to actually you know, find it. Once they have it then, Cooper just about sneaks his, his kick over the post. And um, we're at 2020 all square. New Zealand then, they're holding onto the ball. They're pretty much between the halfway line and the Australian 22, but they're not really getting any further. So Moonga decides to try to cross with the kick to Stevenson. Stevenson has plenty of space out there, but the kick is just a little bit too strong and goes over his head out into touch. Then Australia, they're in possession, but Quade Cooper drops the ball. Looks like he took his eye off it. And New Zealand then from that scrum, they win a penalty. And... They play on a little bit with advantage, but can't do anything with it. So Wonga kicks for the post, and this one just about has the distance to get over to make it 23-20 to New Zealand. And that's how um, we finished, because New Zealand saw out time after the restart and you know uh, didn't really... We only had less than a minute to go, I think, but held onto the ball and then got it off the field. So great win there for New Zealand. You know, amazing comeback from them. There were plenty of mistakes earlier on, and even in the second half, they were still making mistakes, but they dug in and they got the result. And, you know, sometimes um, for a team winning ugly, it, you know, shows just kind of the, the grit that's in the team. And that's what you want going into Rugby World Cup because not every game is going to be you firing on all cylinders and, you know, winning by three or four scores and, and it being easy. You're going to have to dig in at times and you're going to have to win ugly and they're showing that they can do that as well. Australia, they made such an amazing start, but in the second half, didn't really offer too much going forward. And that's the problem is that, you know, when you make that kind of start, it's kind of similar, I think, to, to Leinster in the uh, Champions Cup final. They made an amazing start as well, but 
in that second half you still have to be have a threat you have to be adding points and you have to just be keeping that scoreboard ticking over to make the comeback less and less likely but australia weren't able to do it uh lencer weren't able to do it either against la rochelle and the teams of that quality find a way to get back in and if you're not scoring and they're just eating away at your lead their confidence grows and then they they finally get that score and then you know when when you then try to muster a response you, you don't have it because you you're in almost your mindset has changed you're in defensive mode and suddenly you have to to attack and Australia didn't have enough time um, to to do that, even to to switch over. But I felt like if if they had have been able to, you know, put a bit more pressure on in that second half and keep more of the play in, in the New Zealand half, maybe those chances would have come for them to get that score or two that might have actually won the game for them. But you know, it's it's positive for them. They still haven't won. They've got France up next in you know their the next World game. So. It's not going to get any easier for them, but you can see that there are signs there that, they, you know, they, they can at least challenge top teams, but they're going to have to do a little bit more than that if they want to go far in the World Cup. But, you know, it, it doesn't look as gloomy as it did, I think, at the very start of the championship where they, they looked a little bit abject. New Zealand, they've got that winning habit back now and for for them and for the rest of the world that's very ominous going into the rugby world cup